Greetings, everyone. Thank you for coming this evening, as always. Appreciate you taking part in your city government. I now call this meeting to order. My time is 6.01. Please rise for the pledge. Invocation plans of the Texas Pledge. Father, thank you for bringing us together this evening to see the city's business. We ask you grace us with your wisdom and help us make the right decisions to move the city forward in a sustainable manner. Uh, in your son's name, Jesus, amen. 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 Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Texas Pledge. Out of the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Do we have anybody? Do we have anybody for a visitor citizens forum? Nobody signed up. Okay, the motion by Ms. Randall. 
Get a second by Michael for your discussion. All in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion carries unanimously. Okay, agenda item number six, public recognition. Right, we have a proclamation. Uh, I have asked David and Jordan, our city administrator, to read it. Uh, I'm, I'm a little bit uh, under the weather. I want to make sure I get through this entire meeting. So he's going to read it on my behalf. Is there a proclamation? Proclamation reads, whereas Reefs Across America is a national nonprofit organization founded in 2007 to continue and expand the annual reef laying ceremony in Arlington National Cemetery begun by Maine businessman Merle Worcester in 1992, as well as more than 3,400 additional locations in all 50 U.S. states at sea and abroad. And whereas Reef Across America mission is to remember the fallen, honor those who serve and teach through annual reef laying ceremonies each December and awareness and education events throughout the year. Now, therefore, I, Butch Cook, Mayor of the City of Divine, Texas, do hereby proclaim December 16th, 2023, as National Wreaths Across America Day, with ceremonies at the Evergreen Cemetery and St. Joseph Catholic Cemetery in Divine, Texas, thanks to the Divine Current Event Club for spearing this project in our community, and extend thanks and appreciation to our veterans for their service and sacrifice and to Reese Across America for bringing this honor to our community. And witness thereto, I have hereto set my hand and calls the seal of the city of Devon, Texas to be affixed this 12th day of December, 2023. Mayor Butch Cook. Thank you, David. I sure appreciate that, buddy. We've got a long night ahead of us. Hopefully, it'll be a little shorter than expected. Uh, by the way, the, the Wreath Across America is an absolutely wonderful thing that these uh, these ladies are doing. Uh, they had a, uh, a gathering earlier this week with a tremendous uh, participation. As a matter of fact, I went there. I was supposed to be there at 9.30, and I got there like at 9.29, just like today, about a minute ahead of time. And all the flags, everything were already handed out to everyone. There were groups all over placing these on the, uh, the tombstones. Uh, and and so it, it was just a really nice thing to see that uh, those veterans are getting honored like they should. And once again, I believe the, uh, what is the time of that? Uh, this, okay. I'm sorry. So Ms. Wall was here. She wants to speak. Martha, did you want to speak? Is there anyone here to speak on it? You don't have to. Uh, I didn't see it on the agenda. <coughs> you're, more, you're more than welcome. I would just like to invite you to participate. Uh, the opportunity that we've had to include young people and then the uh, response of our schools has been wonderful and also our organizations. <coughs> on a school day, there were probably 40 or 50 of the many, many kids, of people that were there were from our schools, so our schools are allowing the kids to participate in different ways. And uh, I have had the privilege of being able to find out how many people I live with in this wonderful community are in fact veterans. And, and you, you don't, in our daily lives, you may not know that. And discovering that fact, how can I help? What can I do? The response of a veteran is just uh, what what they did when they served our country for our sakes is what they live out in our community. And I am grateful. And we invite you all to come. Starts at 11. You better get there early because you're going to have to walk. And wear good shoes because we have a good crop of sticker birds in all across the body. <laughs> and that's especially known in the Pacific. Thank you for the chance to speak. Thank you for, for that proclamation. And you are more than welcome, and thank you again. Okay, attend item number seven, employee recognition. Do we have anything, Dora? David. David, I'm sorry. 
was out uh, putting out that fire uh, across from QT the other night? Our fire department. I'd like to say thanks to the fire department for uh, being out here at dark 30 putting out a major electrical fire uh, across from QT the other night. Yes. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Okay, moving on, please. Agenda item number eight, uh, consider approval of council minutes. Regular, regular council meeting minutes from November 21st, 2023. I didn't see any uh, in those. Anybody else? I saw one little one. I'm pulling that for now. Um, wherever it is down on the uh, uh, informational items, um, Josh had been speaking about something and then it moved to another bullet point and all it just says is like he asked that it be clarified. I don't know if we need to put like Josh's name on there just in case because it didn't make any sense otherwise. Oh. Sorry, I'm looking for it. Oh, I'm about the Constitution. Yes. I have a lot of things on here. Yes. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, just the uh, state constitutional amendment for the farming stuff. Uh, I've been requested by a lot of folks to ensure that uh, specifically our, well, all of our livestock requirements for the city are in accordance with that because it only uh, cites safety concerns. I don't think any of our stuff addresses safety. No, it just says he would like Tom to look into that. I think you should just say Josh. Josh. Oh, oh, like oh no, I should say all of them, Richie, instead okay. of, yeah. Gotcha. Well, it says about constitution. Yeah. Okay. Good enough. And informational. Yep. Yes. Okay. Quite nice. <laughs> Does that require a motion? No. It usually doesn't. Thank Good. You. All right. Anything else, guys? Make a motion. We accept the minutes as uh, amended by Stacy. Okay. We have a motion by Josh to accept the minutes as amended by uh, Stacy. We have a second. Awesome. Second by Debbie. Any discussion? All in favor, please raise your right hand. Okay. Any abstain? Okay. All right, all right. we have uh, all members approve uh, Michael abstain. Motion passes. Agenda item number nine. Consider an act upon a request from the Medina County 911 Emergency Communications District for the renewal of the appointment of Mrs. Polly Edland to serve on the 911 Emergency Communications District Board of Managers. I believe if you're looking at your iPad, it's going to be number seven for the morning. Does anyone know this this individual? I do. Is this a good decision? So. We actually sit on the 911 board together. Okay. Uh, I'm on it as well. She's the only elected person. The rest of us are appointed, uh, appointed by the rest of the fire chiefs in the county. And she does a fine job. She actually works up in ESP1. Uh, she does a fine job. Our, the, the whole point for the 911 board is to make sure that the 911 system is funded from the time you make the phone call to the time it's dispatched. Okay. And so all the, all the equipment that is in between there is what is funded by that 911 board and, and overseen by that she does a fine job. She's a good person. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll make a motion we accept. Or point. All right. We have a motion by, by Josh to um, accept a request from the Medina County 911 Emergency Communications District for the renewal, renewal of the appointment of Mrs. Bobby Edlin to the District Board of Managers. I'll second it. Okay, we have a second by Stacy. All in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion passes unanimously. Agenda item number 10. Consider an act upon request by Alderman Ritchie to give an update on the revenue generated under the hotel tax slash country corner in during the fall festival. Josh, you're right. Well, seeing that none of the people who wanted to speak were able to attend tonight, uh, the only thing I've got is a little bit of information from the country corner on the underwhelming uh, results as far as tax revenue, uh, which is they only filled three rooms, uh, brought in about forty-two dollars for city taxes, and that was for the carnival, and then about six dollars uh, for the from the vendors. So total about forty dollars 
uh, fund back into uh, city taxes. Uh, reason I request is I've had quite a few folks reach out. I don't think they fully understand how the money is funded, uh, the hot funds, but they're, they're not happy to see the money continue to go to Fall Fest because they don't feel as though it's bringing uh, revenue into the city. It's, they're not advertising outside the city. They're only advertising the local area, so it's only bringing folks in, well, out of their houses into the uh, downtown area. Uh, it's not generating enough business. Okay, uh, my thought on that to just start off with, um, we're talking about the hotel, what's commonly called to the hotel motel tax. Okay, I didn't necessarily mean, I never personally understood it to mean that it's supposed to bring people to your hotels, right? It's just monies that we can use to promote our community, bring people into the community. So, uh, for example, if they come from wherever, Natalia, Lyle, Pearsall, and so forth, and they come to the town for the festival, uh, surely they gas up, they'll spend money here, do this, do that, and what have you. So I think it's kind of a hard thing to kind of figure out. But then, uh, when you mentioned the sales tax revenue, if we could get a report from the state to see, for example, if our, if our revenue jumps, uh, you know, I guess that would be fourth quarter because of the, the, the fall festival. Uh, I also see it, uh, I've always understood, that anybody can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, the hotel hotel tax is also to, to help promote our local businesses and entrepreneurs and, and so forth. Also, for example, with the fall festival by having booths and, and selling products and things like that. So, 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 so do I understand that, that you're intended to try and measure the effectiveness of the fall festival to, to create revenue? That's a good two-part answer. One is previously advised by Tom. Uh, the objective of that, of that money is to get heads and beds. So it should be for a broader uh, advertising effort, which was part of the chief complaint there is, hey, you're not bringing people into town from out of town to stay here. Uh, the other part there is, yes, you're correct. We want to see, are we getting a return on investment there? Uh, because we continue to put out five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 a year, depending on the year. Um, we should be seeing uh, whoever we're giving that money to apply that to something a little bit more than just holding a carnival. Because that money essentially pays for port bodies, but we're not bringing folks in from out in San Antonio uh, too well, and uh, our police are having to work a whole lot of extra overtime every year for that. So it's costing us uh, out of our tax base a lot more money, and I'd just like to see a little bit more return on that investment. Well, then the other dynamic you get too would be that number one is a fundraiser for the, the Chamber of Commerce. Okay, so so now you, you can I, I, I understand understand where you're going. However, uh, you know the Chamber of Commerce is a I see them as doing quite a good job as far as what they can do, the amount of people that they have. So, so once again, this all trickles down, right? Right. This is why you can use those funds to do that. Um, so, now we need to try and find a way to gauge the effectiveness of the of commerce. When a lot of this has to do with just the people volunteering in the community to be part of the chamber of commerce and trying to make things happen. So, you got a lot of dynamics going here. So other folks come to this council and they request money to do that advertising, to bring people in the community, we deny them. But then the chamber comes and they have an implicit written check for them. So those are, I think I've captured all the, all the concerns that were brought to me. Okay, okay. Uh, I will also say I know that uh, there's been a few years where the chamber didn't get any subsidy from the, the city also, correct? Two years? That I'm aware of. Okay, okay. Was well, well, there something that we can uh, proceed with on this, for example, uh, perhaps uh, uh, sales tax revenue to examine or something? Okay. Good. Are there any positives to the to the fall fest? I mean, we're talking about negatives. I mean, there are positives from it as well. Uh, it's a great event. Okay. Well, it's a fun event. Family. Yeah. All right. I mean, I just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Okay, with all due respect, okay, we have to limit this kind of participation. You are more than welcome to come to the podium and state your name. Yeah. Happy to do that. Sure. I thought you were. Everybody else has been speaking from out there. I got you. I got so you. I was just doing yeah, the same put, thing. I, I think we put Martha on the spot. You know, That's fine. I mean, I've just been several times. Jerry Stevens is doing two times. That's Jerry, yeah. Just to go to that, I'm it's, just been at council meetings quite a bit here lately trying to make them as much as possible. We talk about negatives. I just want to, is there positives to the festival? Because 
there's got to be something good coming from the festival as far as bringing the community together, because that's what we talk about, is bringing community together, bringing families out, and stuff like that. There's always going to be negatives. I just want to make sure we throw some positive in there as well. well I think it's, yeah, I think that's a great point. Okay, I think there are a lot of positives, uh, but, but really what we're trying to, uh, I, I, I personally have said nothing to denigrate the, the Chamber of Commerce. I'm, I'm part of Commerce. I don't I, think Josh is either. No, I'm not talking about yeah, Chamber, right. but I have my own issue with Chamber as well. So, let's <laughs> okay. not go there. But anyway, I'm just uh, talking about the festival alone. Yeah, well, well obviously the festival is a great thing to do. Yes. Okay, it's wonderful for the community. Everybody loves to do it. It's just that this actual agenda item doesn't really right. consider, concern that. Yeah. It just has to do with the effectiveness of the, the, the hotel, 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 hotel tax. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think so. you're right. I think we need to look at what the sales tax brings in for the, for, for the city. Right. I think you're going to get a better number on that rather than the hotel motel. Right. So it's not necessarily being negative. It's well, just, I know it's that, just a matter just, of trying to look into that. So. I understand, but yeah. I just want to make sure that it, it does kind of come out as that. And I'm no disrespect to you, Josh. I just, to the comment or the the point being made, I just want to make that clear. So. Right. Thank That's you, sir. I appreciate it. Thanks, sir. Okay, anything further, anybody? We have a motion of any sort. No action. All right. I got great memories coming to the festival with my two daughters. Spent a lot of money. So <laughs> it was very enjoyable. That's memories for me. Gotcha. But like I said, uh, I think we all love the festival. Yeah. Uh, you know, however, there are things that got to be considered uh, monetarily uh, as far as the city is concerned. Okay. So uh, <coughs> that closes agenda item number 10 of action been taken. Uh, moving on to agenda item number 11. Consider an act of a contract with the Divine Volunteer Fire Department for building inspection services. With the VFD being the primary option, the Bureau of Veritas being a secondary option, at the discretion of the permit requester, and with the Divine VFD being requested to maintain all requisite State of Texas certifications. Um, we have our, our Fire Chief, uh, Greg Atkinson, here, but, but Josh, this is one of your items. Would you like to introduce it, please? Well, Greg, uh, we spoke a few months ago. I uh, asked you to come out and get your perspective because we heard from, uh, I would say, an authoritative figure who spoke to the city, uh, the effectiveness of having code enforcement done by someone able to approach you from a perspective of safety rather than, I'm here from the government trying to put you in your place. Uh, you seem very optimistic about it. I know you folks are doing good things with the community uh, as far as just awareness, and you're also doing stuff at high school, giving kids opportunities, and I'd love to see the creation of career opportunities. I don't know how all this plugs in for you folks, and I certainly don't want to be prescriptive, but uh, go ahead and take it off with what you can offer us. Well, there's, there's, a, there's a couple, not that I need this thing. All right, uh, there's, a couple, there's a couple things to break this down here. So first and foremost, uh, you need to understand we're talking two two different things here. You're talking co-compliance as well as inspections, okay? Those are two different areas. Those are usually in, in a lot of towns, a lot of cities ran by two different people that, that, that do these things and, and all of that. So, uh, you know, when you approach me to discuss if, if we would be interested in it, we're interested in anything that helps this community. And that's the, just the honest and goodness truth. Uh, our goal is to improve and, and help improve anything we can in this, in this, uh, in this community. You know, you talked about our academy and our school that we have going on, and, and uh, I, I thank you for noticing that, and I thank you for bringing that up, but, you know, that one of the things we always talk about in our organization is if we're going to do something, we have to explain how it helps the community, because we're not going to do something just to do it. And so we try to do things that create economic growth. We try to do things that obviously help us on the emergency response, because that's what we do. And so when we start talking about, you know, the inspections and code for enforcement and all this, uh, it's something we're definitely interested in, a def uh, more specifically the inspection side. And the reason I say that is because I know code enforcement is, is typically a employed position through the city. Not something we would, would turn down, not something we would be against, but again, we go back to what, you know, what is already under contract, who's already working with this. We don't want to disturb the economics of that as well. And so we're all for and we have the capability to do either of these. Uh, myself and Administrator Jordan have had the opportunity to sit down and talk offline, and uh, I, I think we see uh, pretty eye to eye on, on a lot of these things. Um, and, and to be honest, my goal in being here today is to see if the council would like to see this move forward before we start putting the man hours into putting what the numbers would look like and what contracts would look like and all of that. 
Is it something that the council and the city would be interested in the Divine Volunteer Fire Department taking over? We have the capability, we have the licensing, we have the, uh, the people to do it. It's just a matter of if that's what the city would like to see. I'd like to elaborate, elaborate on that. I did meet with the uh, fire chief Atkins for about two hours, gave me a tour of the uh, facility, let me know very quick that he, this is not a typical volunteer fire department. And um, he did demonstrate through his uh, staff that they do have capabilities, licenses, and so forth to do the inspections of chemical plumbing and all necessary uh, to conduct inspe inspections for the city. So uh, we are on the same same sheet of music regarding bringing it to the council and see if um, that's a consideration that the council would want to uh, entertain. I did uh, review the contract with our provider now and I'll uh, ask Mr. Case to re review it again to ensure there's no conflict of interest, but I don't believe there is. And um, the, so we wanted to bring it to the council for direction on what which y'all decide to do. And I'm more than happy then to field any questions if there are concerns about going that direction. Uh, I'd be more than happy to field any questions you have for. Aren't we, uh, aren't we just talking about inspections at the moment? At the moment, to my, from the conversation we have done now, two different conversations here. Uh, the alderman had brought me the possibility of both. When I spoke with uh, Administrator Jordan, we only spoke, uh, spoke really about inspections uh, because I, my, it's my understanding there's already an employee in the position of the, the code compliance. Yeah. Uh, and so, again, <coughs> from our perspective, we're, we're willing to do whatever. We can do both, we can do one, we can do neither. It's whatever, it's whatever is best suited for the community and for the city. Well, I think it's a great idea, number one, but I'm just speaking about inspections. Um, right now, we send a considerable amount of money off out of the city. I write, I write a check, I sign a check every, every two weeks, give or take, that goes to Kerrville, and who knows wherever else from Kerrville after that. Uh, to keep that money within the community. Uh, and, and this isn't about making more money for the city, by the way, for us to keep in our coffers. It's, it's, it's having more local control over our inspections. Uh, we run into a lot of problems sometimes. Uh, we need to be more business friendly. We need to be more engaged with people who come in here and want to open businesses and do things. And, and, and I think this will obviously be a great step in that direction. Uh, my other concern would be, since everybody's volunteer, uh, would you ever have any trouble staffing as far as like qualified people to do these inspections in case you have turnover and things like that? So let's be clear in the state of Texas, when you say the word volunteer fire department, it doesn't mean everybody in the building is volunteer. I actually have four paid staff at the moment. Uh, we're looking to increase that also. One of those paid staff uh, is already an inspector with the TCFB and with the state. So uh, I already have an inspector on staff. Uh, depending on how the contract worked out, what the numbers would look like, the deal would be, the idea would be that we should get a second, possibly third. Um, and, un and with those, what we do is when we have staff positions like this with inspectors, we will send volunteers out with them to learn under them. It gives us the ability to teach the next generation how to do that. And by doing that, we create more inspectors and so on and so forth. And so I believe we could probably not only save the city a little money, uh, we could, one, that helps our emergency response because now i got more paid people in the building who can help if there's a major emergency. Two, you're absolutely right, it does help our local economy. It keeps the money here instead of sending you off to God knows where and then it disperses from there. We keep that money here, which continues to grow our local economy. And, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you know, again, I, I can't stress this enough. We're here to do whatever it is that is asked of us. We're here to help. But we absolutely have the capabilities, and I believe that in the end, like you stated, having people that are more concerned, look, I've always said that people that come from the outside to do an inspection are going to go back to where they're from, regardless of how that inspection turns out. But at the end of the day, we live here. So if we, if we inspect a building and then I, my family's going to go eat there or my family's going to go be a part of that, I want to make sure that inspection is done correctly. I want to make sure it's done correctly and that, that things are followed to the T. And so we're, you know, we have that feel to it. We have that aspect of it. Uh, not only that, but I, I would go on and say that this also creates more opportunities. If we are able to fund more positions, that means obviously we continue to create jobs in this town. All of these things, I, I believe only makes the city a divine.
Where would you place your uh, your costs with Bureau of Veritas, which I understand is one of the most expensive options? I'll be 100% honest with you, Alderman. We haven't even discussed the, the funds. Uh, myself and, and uh, Administrator Jordan had decided that we would discuss those things offline if the council decided to to, to move forward with this. I, I will say, and I don't know their costs. I can't I can't even answer that because I'm not sure what they what they're charging. But I can tell you this: uh, whatever it is, I will come in even or below it. Because I can't, I, and I know that, uh, and so I don't. I, you're not going to spend any more money. I can put it that way. Okay. Just want one point of uh, one point to make. Uh, not trying to bring it up right now, but code enforcement. Uh, I can say with a high level of confidence, we have a lot of other vacant positions a person can slide into. I, I on the code enforcement piece, I will say this. Uh, <coughs> Our inspections are no good without code enforcement. I can inspect all day long, my people can inspect all day long, but unless there's somebody going behind us and enforcing, the inspections are only half the battle. Uh, once we leave after the inspection and they do what they're gonna do and all of that, unless somebody is continuously keeping tabs on codes, part of that being the codes being up to date, and I don't wanna get too far down this rabbit hole, but I, I mean, let's be honest, there have been two updates since the last time the city adopted codes. And so that's the first part, it starts with that. And so uh, I, I don't wanna, I'm not gonna talk employment and all that stuff, but code enforcement is an important piece that needs to be done and needs to be done correctly. The other part of this is by doing these inspections, it also allows us to pre-plan these buildings, which right now is something we have to ask for and the people can tell us no. With the inspections, we can make it part of the inspection and we can go ahead and fill out our pre-plans, which means in the case of an emergency, we then have good layouts to protect the surrounding exposure <coughs> buildings next to it because we will already know most of the building while we're doing the inspection. Outstanding. I got you. And uh, code compliance is something that's been talked about quite often and it's going to be addressed very, very soon. We're going to try to move uh, in that direction in a lot of ways. Okay, and I'm not talking employment. I'm talking about sure. updating our codes, being consistent, being easy enough for people to understand and relate to, and all that good stuff that, that, that makes us get along with the community. Because right now we have a lot of uh, friction with regards to code and, and how it's enforced and all that. And it's a tough thing, uh, but we are going to take that on. But it would seem like, like for right now, uh, you might be able to, uh, the inspections uh, can get going. I, 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 haven't, I haven't heard a negative thing about this, personally, from you. And I can't come up with anything to ask you that might be negative. So, so Jerry, there's a lot of positive there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I, I believe, in, and Mr. Jordan, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe tonight what we're looking for is just to make sure that this is the direction that you, you all want to go, and then myself and Mr. Jordan will lock ourselves in a room and we'll, we'll get the numbers down to where we need to be, uh, and then we'll come back to, to council and, and make sure you approve of it. Uh, but that, I believe that's where we're at in this process, if, if that's the direction you're looking So do we have any other comments from anyone? Um, this would be yes, a contract, yes. correct? It would be. Okay, um, what would the time frame be on that? Is there anything in particular you're looking for? All of those things would be, that. I, I, again, I can't speak to that. Uh, I mean, I, look, I would like as long as possible with as much money as possible, <laughs> but, but the reality is, the reality is what we're doing city. I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, here is the nice thing about being a 501c3 nonprofit. We're not looking to make a buck, right? Everybody else is going to stand before you, including in any third party that you already have. It's their job. It's, it, don't get me wrong. And I, I, I told uh, Mr. Jordan we can't take a loss. Like, I, I got to be honest about that. We're not, we're, not, we're not going to do it for free. We're not going to take it at a loss. But we, we're not out to, that, that's not why we're doing this. We're doing this to better our community. We're doing this to make sure that buildings are inspected properly and are safe for the residents of the city to be able to go in and enjoy. Sounds good. Anything else? Sounds real good. I, I like it because it's going to be here. They're, they're, they're from Divine. But they, if there's an appointment need to be made, we don't have to wait two or three days when somebody from San Antonio to come and inspect, you know? They're right here. And if you can't find us, we're just a big blue red building right at the end of the highway there. I mean, we're right here in town. Yes, ma'am. I have two things. Yes, ma'am. Number one, uh, if we decided to go this route, how long would it take for you all to be, get all the certifications before we could even use you for 
the inspection? We already have the certification, man. We're ready to go. Okay. So we'll let you hear that one. Number two, and this isn't you. Yes, ma'am. I don't want you to take offense to this. I have no feelings, ma'am. But there are cities in South Texas that have had their fire departments be their inspectors, and all of them except two that I know of right now have gone back to using third parties like Veritas. I don't know why. I, I have no idea why. I just, when I went doing my little Google search, that's what I came up with. So I don't know if there's a problem. I can answer that for you. Okay. Most fire departments don't want to do it. Oh. That, right. bottom, bottom line. So the reality is, in most instances, it's forced upon the, bottom, uh, the fire department. It's not uh, necessarily asked for. Okay. Uh, you know, they don't know have anybody else to do it. The fire department's already doing inspections. So, hey, while you're there, while you're doing your pre-plans, just go ahead and do this inspection too. We take a different approach to everything. Uh, the way our team approaches everything is they really do have the community first mindset. And and even our uh, one of my inspectors is here tonight. He'll be more than happy to get up and speak with you. He's already done it for the city of Poteet and, and a couple other places. And so it, it's not... Uh, the reason those departments are unsuccessful is because they just flat out don't want to do it. And so we're in a position where not only do we want to do it, but we're excited about it. Uh, it gives us more opportunity to teach, again, to teach the younger generation coming behind us how to do things properly. And just to add on to that, um, I think the proposal is Girl Girl Talks would be a secondary inspection company. So we're not, we wouldn't be, ever be without the possibility of having an inspector come in. Or if the, someone so chooses not to use the fire department, it's a primary bureau. Bureau talks can come in and conduct that inspection. So, um, but the chief and I had a very good meeting. Like I said, last couple hours, I believe it. We uh, could forge a good working relationship uh, between the fire department and the city, and um, we will can evaluate the performance and give you an update in three six months. <coughs> I make a motion we authorize city administrator to negotiate a contract with the divine volunteer fire department chief and bring back to council for final approval for inspections. Okay, we have a motion from, from Josh at the uh, divine VFD. Uh, I want to shorten that somehow, but uh, then we enter into uh, negotiations with divine VFD through our, 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 our inspections. Our inspections. Right, we have a second by. Uh, by Flipper. Any discussion? Further discussion? All in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion passes unanimous. Thanks a lot, Greg. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Is he one of our president? All right. All right, moving on, folks. Uh, agenda item number 12. Consider an active on the fee schedule for the code compliance department. Uh, Josh, is this you also? Which, I gotta find it again, so I don't know which. It, it's number 10 on your uh, uh, info items. Okay, thank you. Oh, yeah, I have this. Oh, this is the one where we had to go back and review. There was one thing on here now, because I left my notes at home. There's one thing on here that's not there. And now I can't remember what it is. There's nothing on here that's in there. Yeah, I was like... There's one thing on here that's, that's not, not there. there. That's not there, and now I can't remember. <laughs> there is one fee that we charge. Oh, the trucks. Uh, the, um, your favorite one, the permits for the food trucks. Oh. It's not on here. They have the temporary sales and solicitor annual, oh, okay. but there's no food uh, uh, like truck um, annual permit. There's a permit. Cost. We just need that added. Let's move. Okay. My 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 top of list pet peeve with this in general is all it is is an impediment to businesses and well and homeowners doing anything. We add zero value in our permitting process. All we do is take money and add yet another barrier for anyone to do anything with their property. So we continue to complain. People need to clean up. People need to clean up. Well, demolition is already going to cost you 130 bucks. They couldn't afford to replace the windows and some siding. I'm willing to assume that $130 is also really difficult to come up with. Uh, so, overall, I'd like to see not a single permitting fee be more than $400. In the under the alterations, 
as far as new construction, can we cut those down to 25 cents for 1,500 or 10,000 square feet? And it seems, seems like, or 25 cents for about that one, and I think 15 cents is reasonable then for the over 10,000 square foot. Do you realize all of these fees are at or below what other cities around us charge? We're not over and above. But it's not about being over and above, it's what value do we add by charging money for this, other than it goes, feeds back into the budget, or we're taxing those people on, the, on their property values, so I don't, we're not, we're not yeah, delivering you're a perfect, service. So it's done properly because the permit does not do that. Let me finish my sentence. I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. Um, Josh, if you would, do you have more to talk about as far as, yes. as, far as your presentation? Okay, please finish. Roger, Debbie, then just addresses your, your concerns. Okay. Um, for trade permits, those go up to $10,000. That's insane. Between $100 and up to $10,000. That's uh, something, no more than $400 for anything. Uh, for the rest of them there, they're $208, 520 160 and it's 160 per trade. So if you have to have HVAC, electrical, plumbing, I mean, those costs add up really quickly. Uh, so I, I don't know why we're charging more than 50 or 100 bucks for those. Um, solar panels, I don't know why we would charge $208. Just the cost of bringing a manufactured home is $520. Uh, certificate of occupancy is another 100 bucks. I already covered that demolition. Uh, a variance has a fee of 50 bucks. Okay, uh, for the time. And the rest seems pretty standard, except down here at the bottom. Swimming pools, there's no actual number on that, just based on valuation. Uh, sprinkler system trade permit, valuation by 10,000, I don't know if that's dollars or linear feet or, I, those don't actually have numbers on them. So I would say cap all those at 400 bucks. Again, my objective here is to we're not adding any value through this. That's what the inspections do. All we're doing is saying, give us money for permission to do work on your own property with your own money that you're then going to use to pay the contractor and buy the materials. Oh, and then that will be increased property tax value. Done. Okay, Debbie. Okay, Debbie. Okay. Um, I think I asked this question before when we talked about it. Do these permit costs, Dora or David, uh, do they include the inspection amount? The inspection fee amount, I guess I should have said that. Yes. Yes, they do, okay. So, what they're paying for here is getting the permit so that it's done to code because they're getting inspected right after the, when they get done at that point. So this is inspection and permit fee total. I don't think we're adding these amounts, because I went, and looked up everybody. Do you know how long it takes to find this stuff on other, but everybody's websites? Besides the fact that it's not on ours, it needs to be. Uh, now that we have one you can read, um, we're not over and above. We're like right in the median of everybody around us. So I don't see that this is a problem. This is the cost of building. This is the cost of doing business. I know a lot of them don't like it. I'm just saying, I wouldn't like it either if I had to spend an extra $2,000 on a $500,000 house. But, and you're right, the uh, that 10000 the sprinkler system, that does need to be. There's a little few tweaks because some of this doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but I don't think the amounts are wrong. Okay, can we agree that we will, we will separate the permit fee from the inspection fee? Because I've known folks paying thousands of dollars for the fees, and they don't know what they're paying. So if we can just make for a permit and inspection. No, just make it how, how hard is that? One at a time. One at a time. Yeah. But can we really make it clear? This is how much your permit costs. This is how much your inspection costs. Because we also see a variation if the fire department takes over here. Well, they need to change cost. once the fire department. I agree with you on that, but I don't think we need to split them. <clears throat> Nobody else does. I'm not saying that's the right thing to do. Don't you put that in the paper. I'm just saying it makes it more, the more you split stuff here, the more difficult it is to understand. If I'm going to go do a 1,500 square foot tiny home, I know it's going to cost me $1,020.50. And that's my permit and my inspection. 
and I'm good. So we're going to require the divine VIT charge the same amount as Bureau Veritas. Because if you're not changing those fees, they have to charge the same amount because no, they have to what we charge. Didn't I just say it might change if we go with they change? This can change. I'm not saying it can if VFP does take over. I'm saying right now, today, because it's Veritas, I know it will cost me 1020 That's my, my permit and my inspection. I don't have to go searching for another column to add to it. We're simply Veritas as an option. So then you have to create a second call, one for VFD, one for Veritas. No, no, no. I said today because today VFD is not doing inspections. Today. Okay, next month you can still choose Veritas. Do you understand what I'm saying? I understand. What you're making this more difficult than it needs to be. These fees are astronomical. I, I want people to have a, a clear understanding of this is how much money I have to pay to put a, a new sink in my house. If I choose the volunteer fire department, it costs this much. If I choose Pure Rare, it costs this much. This is how much money goes and in the so city. And so then maybe it will change when the FD comes, unless they're at the same price. May I say something? Yeah, definitely. Now, <laughs> now, the chief would have come in and have a meeting with you, and he wants to change these prices more. Are you going to complain about that? I don't understand. Well, if, if, the, if the chief wants to take, you want him to take control of everything, and he thinks these prices are too low and he wants to raise them up, are you going to question him on it? He controls the inspection program for his fire department. Okay, but if he's going to go up on prices on everything, he's thinking that this is, this is great right now, but it's not making the city any money or him. It's, are you going to question him on that situation? Billy, like me question Bureau Veritas. I, it's a free market. We can choose what, who or not we use. We're adding an additional choice that should have zero impact on the permit fee. And that's the thing I'm trying to get at is how much money the city charges you to do work in your property is the cost I want to drive down. Permitting or inspection fees I don't have control over because we don't employ an inspector. If we employ an inspector, then we have that schedule. Does that make sense? There, no, those are separate. Okay, I, you have to get a piece of paper from me to get permission to do work in your property. That costs you 20 bucks. Okay. Not to pay an inspector, that's $1,000. Those are two separate things. But isn't it combined in this? Yeah, yes. that's my point. They should need to separate two columns and then they equal a certain amount of money. Okay. Does that make sense? But, but if, if we separate it and he comes back and he says, you know what, <laughs> we need to charge a little bit more. Are you going to question his? I can't it's question. Like, He's a separate. I can't question food king how much they charge me for some chips. I'm just, just trying to say you just. Like, you know. I'm questioning the amount of money the city is taking from citizens for permission to do work on their own property. That is it. Because within the city limits, they have to be to a certain code. That's, That's okay. How much money are we charging people as citizens, taxpayers, to do work on their own property? That is not clear in here. It's conflated with the inspection cost. And so we don't have any idea. Well, I don't have any idea. You're building a house. You're looking at a total cost. You're not, not carrying. OK. If I might interject. OK, right now you're talking about how you're going to bring stuff down. OK, fine. I think that can be done easy enough. I, I think the main point we're trying to, the point you're discuss is the actual cost, not if it's broken down here and there and so forth. I, th I think either one is fine. I, th I think anybody who's building a house, getting something done, can understand, well, I, I'm going to have uh, $25 of, of, of a permit and I'm going to have another $100 for, for inspection. That, that, that's kind of, I don't see that as a large factor, but Mike, I think you had a great comment about if, if the fire department comes in and says, hey, this is too, too low or, or, or so forth, I think, that's, I think that's a very good point to make on that. Uh, and that's something that will be, to me, will be arbitrated between uh, Mr. Jordan and, and the fire department once they kind of get everything all lined up. So how about we not really jump the gun on all this, number one. Uh, Josh, I also agree with you that we need to make things as affordable as possible for people, whether it's personal, uh, of, of their own homes, or whether it's business, okay? At the same time, we also have a code compliance officer that we have to pay. Uh, we have to have things recodified. These things cost us money also. Uh, may I propose that perhaps you come up with another fee schedule uh, to show to council, and, <coughs> right, and then we can write in perhaps some comparisons, Debbie, with, with other towns like you, like you've researched. I have it all at home. Okay, that's okay. Cool. So, okay. 
Go ahead, Josh. I would too difficult. On the, con on the condition we, can, we uh, revisit this in a month or two, uh, I would request send me how much the permits are and the inspection fees as separate costs. And then I'd uh, like to make a motion we table this item until March. Okay, I think that's a. Until March? Yeah. Well, you, you think you need that long? No. Well, it's going to have to come back because there shouldn't be a. I, I just, yeah, it's going to be a. Yeah. It's going to be a holidays contract. Well, let's just, uh, if, if we got room in January, let's, let's just okay. let's get right back at it. Just okay. make a motion we table it. So, so I just don't want to. You know, yeah, we're just going circles here. Yeah, the state is not clear. Okay. Do we okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, I assume we have no motions. We okay. have a motion to table. Oh, I'm sorry, my bad. Josh, okay, we have a motion to table that item uh, for a future agenda. Second. We have a second by Flipper. All in favor, please raise your hand. Motion approved unanimously. Moving on, please. Consider an act upon amending the contract between the Little League and the City of Divine, uh, uh, request requested by me. It's just a follow-up on, on the last the last meeting we had with Council. Uh, I had quite a few ideas with regards to the contract. Uh, council let it be known that they didn't want to go as far as I wanted to. Um, so the uh, the contract was revised, and then. Uh, with, uh, it's not completely the same as the previous. There are some, some updates to it. Everybody get that? Everybody familiar with, the, with what I asked for yeah, on that? changed a lot than what we decided. Uh, that I perhaps misunderstood what you decided. Well, we didn't decide to have the, the uh, Little League, have the city have all the electricity and charge the Little League. That's down, uh, that shouldn't be on here, is that on here? Yeah. No, that was for a future somewhere down the line. That's not to on be. On the one we got today, or yesterday, whenever it was, today, it has here that the city, the electrical account for the park shall be in the city's name and Little League shall reimburse the city. We didn't agree to that. And you, you, you're right, I did not ask for that. And then. Um, Where is that? Number three. We just got it today. Let us have him. Oh, not number three, so sorry. Number four. Okay, not number two. If you refer to, uh, yeah, I think we got a wires crossed in here somewhere. Um, that is something that I think I mentioned at the last meeting. Uh, some things that I would like to, to, to get to one of these days. Uh, the council was definitely was very specific that they didn't want to go as far as I did at the last one. So if you have it in front of you, uh, and, and this just came in today. I worked all day and walked straight over here, so I have not read this actual one that was typed out. And then the water, it's also it's, it's the e water. There's an email on there that I sent requesting. Yeah, so, okay, that's all I asked for. This is the actual contract, so that I'm yeah. looking at. Yeah, this is news to me. My apologies, I, I have not read this. Uh, does everybody have the, the email that I sent that, that stipulated the, the changes? And then if, if it, on number three, it also says during the off season, the account post back to the city for water. And we don't do that now. No, that's not on there either. That was I, not on my I email. I'm just say yeah. this is the contract and that's what I looked at. I didn't really look at your email. Yeah, <laughs> clearly we're going to have to go back and, and redo this again as far as an official contract. We did come on earlier in the week. I'm sorry, what's that? You're saying the one we received today is dramatically different from the one earlier in the week. Yeah, it is. Yes. It is. You're okay with one earlier in the week. Well, I thought the one earlier in the week didn't have any of that. It didn't. It's the pure and simple, almost like the original one. It's yes, it was. It's for mowing inside and outside. Right. Boxes. Well, and people can use it. Let me, uh, but we've always said people. Hold on, guys. Hold on. Let me go ahead and uh, uh, refresh and... and and discuss the bullet points that I made with my email to put this on the agenda, okay? Uh, number one, I said the Little League should maintain its three playing services inside the fences during its scheduled season. Okay, that's the way it is now. Okay, there's no change there. 
and, and I did that just to, to get to the next. Okay, the city should mow outside the playing fields year round. That's also in the contract, okay, currently, uh, including trimming of the fence lines and maintain the curves and gutters of. That is an addition, okay. Uh, when the Little League is not in season, the city should mow and trim the fence lines of all areas, including the playing fields. That is an addition. So all it is is basically saying that when the Little League is not using it by the, the dates that they give us, then we mow and trim and have it look nice for the property of the property owners that, that are adjacent to the Little League. Because that doesn't always get done. Uh, it's a hit and miss kind of thing, it has been for years. So I was just kind of like, you know, it's our property. Uh, I said, I don't see why we can't mow it. I, I talked with Pete about it, the public works director. He says it would be no problem at all for him to go ahead and, and mow and trim everything. Okay, so that was the other thing that I want to put in the contract. Uh, once again, and I've been very consistent on this, uh, on other issues, uh, okay, I believe. I believe what we own, the city should, should maintain and take care of. Uh, thirdly, I, I suggest it is my opinion, the city should maintain the buildings it owns, structural issues, windows, plumbing, et cetera, uh, at the Little League Park. That is, nowhere, that is nowhere to be found in the contract. Currently in the contract, it's a blanket statement that says the Divine Little League Association shall maintain the buildings and the property. Okay, which I think is not fair to them. I think it's too am ambiguous. Uh, it's, it's not specific enough. Uh, and then I said other improvement projects should be addressed individually in conjunction with the Little League and subsequent approval by the City Council. Okay, they've had a great volunteer force here the last couple of years, especially this past year. A lot of the work they did right here, the, the welding and, and so forth and so on, and that was all done at, at zero cost to the city. Okay, obviously we don't want to pay for things if we don't have to, okay, but sometimes there might be some, some uh, capital improvements that just needs to be done to keep the property viable. Therefore, that's why I put in there and address individually in conjunction with the Little League and the city. All right? In other terms, we shouldn't just dump the property on the Little League by the terms of the contract. Okay? And I went on to say I would also like to see the facility being used when the Little League is not in season by the general public, other organizations, teams, etc., uh, including use of the lights when necessary. The bathrooms can remain closed since that appears to be a tough issue. That's all I asked for. I think it's pretty, pretty easy. Uh, to be eventually, perhaps somewhere down the road when, when budget allows and all that, uh, these other things can, can be added. But right now, I did not request that. Uh, because that was not the direction I was given. Where, where, where are the lights in this contract? I didn't see the light, the one sent earlier in the week. But I don't see the use of the lights in that. Oh, well that's why I put it in my email. Oh, okay, okay. I mentioned. Josh, the one you got during the week, that's, that's, the, the, the re, that's the contract that we currently have. Okay. There's yeah. no changes on that. That is, I yeah. want y'all to have something. <clears throat> So we've just had some. Uh, uh, that wasn't in there. The, uh, run, the Little League season running January 2nd through July 31st. <coughs> General public shall register with the City of Divine, registered users. That's have. the old one. Yeah, we, that's that's the old we one. would let if the public, it would be open to the public, and if they wanted to, <coughs> they could call the city and, you know. Rent it out? Yeah, not rent it, but have. You know, like the Briscoe Park, you, a lot of people have their birthday parties there. It's first come, first serve. But Little League, we said they would actually have to register with the city so that not somebody else could come in and take over if they decided to have a little tournament or something. During their season, correct? Not during Little League season, this would be off season. Yeah, off season. Okay. Yeah, I, didn't even, I didn't even put that in there as far as, far as this. Uh, because that's already in the current concept. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, make a motion we table this until it can be restructured. Uh, I'll yes, sir. I'll, I'll second that. I'm a little enraged. Okay, we have a right, we have a motion uh, by by John. I'm sorry. We have something else. No, no, Mayor. I was just going to say if, if they're going to do that, I'd like to know what the changes are now, so we can have it ready for the next time. Well, that's what I was trying to do. Yeah. So, I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. So, so. Okay, council. Discuss it again. 
Okay, right now we have a, uh, does anyone want to, Josh, want to send a motion for Debbie the second? Aurora, do you have any comments on this? <laughs> yes. Really not much, huh? I don't have any comments on this. Uh, I was just here to see what the contract was, too. I don't have a copy of the new one or the old one. <coughs> Our season starts like tomorrow when we are seeing today. So our season's ready to start, so I kind of need something so we can kind of get in there and start doing things. But my main concern, if we don't want to get on board with everything right now, that's fine. I can, I can push it till next season. I'm okay with that, but I do need that extra bathroom, that single bathroom that's on Park Avenue. Something needs to be done because there's where the water leak is. So either the city wants to cut it off and then we can just demolish it or if the city even wants to give us permission to cut it off and then we can find something to do with it. But I won't pay the permit fees to demolish it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, Aurora, our, our apologies. I thought I had it. I thought I had it. Hey, it's okay. Up. As long as I still have permission to go do the things I need yeah, to do, I'm uh, okay with it. Uh, I still think you know, Tom, does she still proceed under the old contract? Yes. Uh, Until we can get another one in place? Let's see. If you look at, uh, I mean, I'll find you the number. I thought it was 3 December. It says 3 December. Yeah. Yeah, no, but it's more than seven. No. The old contract, it's under four. This lease will automatically be extended for additional one year rental period. So really, unless the city or you know, Little League and the city agree, this, this continues. And then, okay, and then my other question, I don't know what y'all have in y'all's contract, but the water will stay at least the same, correct? Mm -hmm. For my on season, during yes. my season? Right. Okay, right. So that's, I was trying to get here too, just so I know whenever we start doing our things. Yeah. So since there's really nothing, anything different as far as what you okay. are doing, other than I'm proposing that if something that like as far as the grounds and the maintenance and all that, it you know aside from your ordinary day to day maintenance like cleaning and, and what have you were to happen, then it, it, I don't want this. I don't want it to be dumped in your lap to take care of because you have a. I'll wait for the train. You have you have limited revenue to do these kind of things. Okay, so uh, and once again, it's, it's the city's property. So I suggest you proceed under the old contract because uh, I want to see this through okay. myself, okay? And uh, you know, to me, it's baby steps. So if we get somewhere down the road, but right now, I would be real happy if, if, if the city was just doing this to help you out. Okay. Okay. I would agree. Okay. I would agree. I'm okay. Happy okay, Josh. You mentioned something about the lights. I don't. Yeah. I don't see that in your email though. Uh, well, it is. Uh, it says. Uh, I want to say it's not. I just, just quick this skin through it because I, I don't want them not to pay the electric bill. People go out and turn them on a whole bunch. Right, right. That's, that, 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 that's something. Yeah, that's something. They're only going to get turned on if she goes and turns them on. Okay. Yeah. There's a key. Yeah. That. So, well, well, that can be put into writing however, however you want it to do. I'm just saying. So, I put that in there because right now it gets dark at five thirty, six o'clock. So, if we want. Folks who use it when the weather's nice, they're going to need lights. In the in the off season, correct? You're talking about off season. Yes, sir. Okay, because we can always contact them in the off season if somebody says, "Hey, we run a run a tournament in the evening." Right. We can contact her. We can get them turned on, and of course, you'll know how much is used yes. because exactly they're the only ones using it. Right. Yes, so I think that's something we we discussed that earlier that that would work if anybody ever wants them. Yeah. I mean, up to now, we've never had anybody want them. Yeah. We just want to increase the use of the facility when the lilies out there. And I know Aurora's in, in favor of that, uh, you know, amongst the other things, so. Will there be a fee for a team that wants to use that field during the off season for a couple hours or something like that? It could start getting dark by six, so I, you're gonna eat the first, lights. Personally, I wouldn't recommend that other than the lights because it has to be paid for. But as far as the safety at this moment, at this juncture, 
Uh, first come, first serve. It's there for a reason for people to use it and enjoy it. Uh, and then it's. Then uh, we talk about the later. The, yeah. Because that's not actually affecting Little League. It's off season. Yeah. It's off season. Yeah, okay. I, have, I have the gates locked. Okay. So they are locked only because the apartment complex was using it as a as a dog field. And so I went and bought the locks and we just locked all the gates. Right. right. Yeah, I won't but. open them. And it would be up to her to charge for electric if folks do want to use it. Use it. Yeah. Is that, is that no, a Right thing? now, yes. I don't, I, don't know, that. I don't know who's going to collect the fee. There was a fee. Pearsall charges a fee. They charge like $35, and they think it's like three hours or something like that with the lights. A lot of the teams, there's, I know two of the teams practice in Pearsall because it's the only place that had lights uh, during the uh, select ball season, or I guess it's year round select ball, so. They, they uh, go over there and play or not, they use a parking lot at the, at the high school on the asphalt there. So, uh, I mean, I think it's something that we can, if we, she collects the money, if Aurora collects the money or the city collects the money, we just put that money back into the Little League, you know, benches or something like that. I mean, I don't know, how, I haven't been to the Little League field in probably about, you know, this Bob. <laughs> <laughs> It did? Okay, it did. Yeah, that's good. good yeah, yeah, quite. Lots of quite a <laughs> it, it, it was very, very nice. Uh, so, so anyway, I don't want to uh, do all with this too much longer. However, the part that is in this contract with today actually is a solution to that problem okay. to where if, 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 if the lights are under the auspices of the city, okay, so then the Little League would, would reimburse the city for the electricity it uses, probably save money. Okay, because the city's going to get a better price. Okay, and then if uh, other people are going to use it, right, like in the off season, the Little League wouldn't have to mess with it. The city could go ahead and, and say, well, it would cost, cost you this much, put you out of the lights and all that. So that's my vision in the in the long run. But right now, just to keep things as simple as possible, uh, their season's about to start. They're going to oversee, they're going to do other things and, and what have you. And then they're going to start having tryouts probably in January. Okay. So, uh, so if we can at least get that accomplished, that would be good. We can revisit it later. <coughs> Have you asked another in your face? You want to say something? Yeah, I, I'm against us doing anything with the electricity. I think that's their gig. That's okay for now. Yeah, okay. it's not included. The old, we're going to go with the old contract for right now. Correct. Right. Except for the fact that we're going to change, that we're going to mow inside and outside of the fence at off season. Because that's what we all agreed on at the last meeting. Well, that's the only thing we changed on the contract. Well, I think we added in our maintenance facility, Jeff. Let me, let me oh, ask I thought we agreed that it was our, it was our building no, and our facility. No, we did not agree on that. Aurora. Well, I'd like us to. How's that? I, what would your bill be, your electric bill, during the, the Little League season? So when I, so right now, I get like a $30 just a base, $30 to $60 just a base left bill for my off-season months. Okay. But during my season, when I have my lights on, and so we play five days out of the week, I get billed about eight hundred dollars, seven to eight hundred dollars a month. So what would the discount be? Wouldn't you like a discount if the city took over the lights? It would be nice. I'm just, I'm just saying. I don't know what the bill would be. It, it would be nice because it would take all that responsibility away from us, especially all because everybody comes to me to try to open the field and turn on the lights for the off season. But I'm not going to pay seven hundred dollars a month or even a hundred dollars a month. For right. another team who doesn't play Little League to come and use the field. Well, we wouldn't exactly. expect you to pay that. No, I mean, well, I don't want me, but Little League. I wouldn't, I wouldn't right. want to spend Little League money that way. I really, I, I'm not tight with my own money. I spend my, my money like crazy. Ask my husband, he hates it. But Little League money, I am really tight with Little League money. I hate to spend it. I, if I can find another way for someone to volunteer or to do something, I prefer it that way. Just so we have money in our books, because everything is expensive. And we try to do everything local, but local, the local photography costs more and everything like that yeah. for everything else. So. so you wouldn't have a problem with the city took over the electricity and I you just pay have us? Because then y'all can open it up for everything. Y'all can host tournaments or y'all can have the people come sure. and ask y'all to host the tournaments and things like that. Makes a lot of sense. It, yes, it makes a lot of sense. Thank you. <laughs> All right, I'd like to amend my motion and append a request to it. Identify the cost for one hour while using all of the lights in the facility 
and then craft a, an hourly fee plus maybe 20%. Well, it's a, to the point there, uh, that's a bit of to, to rent out. Contract. We're talking contract right now. We're not talking about. Can if we say that? Hold on, hold on. Uh, <coughs> please condense that. That's, that's kind of a. a well, and it's part of the request here. I, I don't think I need to be part of the motion, but turn his, turn his lights on for one hour during the off season. Figure out what kilowatt, the price per kilowatt hour is under our discount so we can maybe reduce their cost. That way they can compensate the city for whatever they're using and we can still rent it out to folks at a reasonable cost, just a little bit above the electric fees. But we're not gonna know because that electricity is in their name, it's not in the city's name. Well, okay. Well, I, I we have a motion. Actually, we can see what it costs under my Oh, we so have a motion. An we have a motion. Um, well, I didn't get to make the motion yet. I was, I was <laughs> making the request. Well, I know, you, you, okay, so I tell you what. Um, we had a motion earlier to table this item. That's the motion I'll recognize uh, until the next meeting. And uh, Debbie seconded it. Uh, seconded it. Okay, those are two I would like to recognize at the moment. Uh, I agree with a lot of things that are being said. However, they need to get moving. We need to get moving this evening. And there are some things that we can take care of between now and then to make things a lot easier for us to discuss. Let me ask a question real quick, and then we can Yes, ma'am. Tom, if we right now say go with the contract the way it is the city, and so she can do what she needs to do, and we decide to go ahead and change electricity over to the city with their uh, approval, does that mean the contract has to be redone again? Well, we're, we're talking about making some amendments in here, <coughs> right? Uh, so we can do that in the future. I mean, it's being tabled. And by the terms of the old contract, it continues on. Okay. So, so she doesn't have to wait on us. No. Right. That's what what about that was the big question. Right. That's why I'm trying to... Well, what about the toilet? Well, that's something that we're talking contract right now. Contract. Well, I know, but can she fix that toilet without us having lines for me to get on Friday? Okay. That's, that's a complete other issue. That's something that we can't address at this time. Uh, that would have to, to, to come up. I can put it on for next month because I do need to know what I can do. I think, I think we have to do And I would like for y'all to think about it too for next month, which y'all think. Great idea. Y'all can go visit it. And you got my phone. Well, take lunch. He's probably going to tell us. <laughs> I agree with you. <laughs> you guys you got, take I got you. I'm trying. I'm trying. Okay, all right. We have a motion in a second. Do we have any further discussion, please? Okay, we have a motion to table this item until the next meeting. Uh, the motion is by Josh, the second one is by Debbie. Uh, all in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion carries unanimously. We will move it over again. All right. Okay. Okay, agenda okay. item 14. Consider act upon proceeding with the proposal for the work to be done on hangars 8, 8A, and, and 10 at the uh, Divine Municipal Airport. Requested by Alderman Woman Randall. Okay, Debbie, it's your year four. Okay, so the council meeting and procedures here. Um, By the way, we're on the airport. Oh, airport, I'm so sorry. Airport, so we, <coughs> did Did we get any of the other uh, proposals, David? We had one coming on today and they'll get the proposal on Friday. We currently have one, and uh, so as I was saying earlier, I'd like to bring more than one to you. We have three companies called, one short of the day, they're going to give our estimate. Did they give you an Friday. estimate? Estimate? Like, did they give you a an idea? A guess? Yeah. Nine. Sorry for the bad news, but no. They, he said <laughs> he said he would give me Friday for the estimate. <coughs> so basically, yeah, and we're going to go another month. This is going to be they're going to be a year old in our name before right. we even can maybe lease them out. That's the whole reason I asked this to be on the agenda. It's, it's we have one time. proposal right now. Is that you will get back to you on you Friday? You will get back to me on Friday. And we're meeting again on Friday? Yes. Are we? For sure. Yes. That's my special meeting Friday. Oh, can I be put on the agenda then? No, agree so. Uh, we have enough time now. I have 72 hours now. Oh, 
Yeah. We're already past it. Yeah. That's why you didn't want it on there. Yeah. So. Okay. So we're waiting for January again. This just sucks. Can we, uh, on bids and everything else, can we just advertise that in the paper that the city is asking for bids for certain for the hangers or? Uh, just kind of bring up a little bit on this. I don't know the process that the city was using initially since we spoke about it the last time a couple months ago. Uh, but since David has gotten here, uh, he has contacted other airports to see who they use and recommend and so forth. So we have, and, and, uh, and he got some, uh, David, you'd like to talk about that real quick? Sure. So everybody knows. Yes, I contacted um, some neighboring cities that has airports and they gave me the points of contact for Hangar Door repairs and installers, and that's where we got our additional uh, vendor list from. We contacted uh, three additional people that had not uh, been contacted before. Um, they've been, I honestly, slow to respond, all of, because uh, by a smaller and not an active airport. However, we did have one to respond today, and they only gave us our estimate for, uh, for Friday. We still have two calls in. They said they were coming, so um, whatever. You, we're going to have to move, obviously, uh, Council of Autumn and Randall, so if we don't get more than two, then that's what we have to bring to the Council of Autumn to decide. But we're actively calling and, and trying to get an estimate from the professionals with this back to Council to get moving on this uh, item. I think that uh, I think David took good initiative there, and he tried to get it in time, and they just didn't respond uh, yet. Okay, so I believe we get something on that. So, I don't think anybody sitting here on this panel is happy with anything about the airport, did he? No, I understand that. Uh, but am I, I'm not happy either. But I'd much rather get these things done so we can get money and revenue for that loan. That's been my whole reason for this. I realize even if we decide to sell, we still got to have these up to par. Otherwise, we're not going to get top dollar. So, in any shape or form, we need these done. And it seems like there's, I'm not, I'm not dissing you, David, or Dora, or anybody else about this, because it seems to be the, the universe is after us to not get these done. That's just how I'm feeling. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm starting to understand some of that, too, since I've been to mayor about getting things done. It seems like it takes three months to do something that should take a week. Correct. Uh, I was just kind of bring everybody up to speed, whoever, whoever may not be a, a, acquainted with this. Uh, you know, the city uh, essentially sees airport hangers. This is well before uh, I came on board. Uh, we went through a process. Uh, we asked the, our airport advisory board for direction and guidance along with textile aviation. And when it all came down to it, the, the hangers that we, we seized, or condemned or in such bad shape we have to put in another anywhere between fifty to eighty ninety thousand dollars just so they can be shown to be rented so that's pretty much everything in a nutshell and we're trying to do that uh, to bring them up to where we can at least show them and have somebody interested in them uh, that is reliable um, and so that's where we're at at this time hopefully when that occurs we can start bringing in some rental revenue with those three hangers like Anything make, else? I'd like to make a motion. Okay, Josh. We can make a motion. We table this item until we get an appraisal to inform the cost benefit of making any repairs. How about until January so it comes back in January? If we get an appraisal in a month, sure. Well, you're appraising it? That's not what's on the agenda. I think we've already, uh, we've already authorized to go out for uh, construction bids. Okay, so, so Debbie was uh, <coughs> wanted to see where we stood on that and what was going on. So I think we need to proceed in that direction too. So that, that's the matter at hand right now. Uh, I think that would be a good agenda item perhaps on the next one. Right now, the matter at hand is the, uh, the repair of the hangers. So you can table this exact motion here. Uh, plus this item here if you wish. Or we can proceed with it. But there's nothing to act upon it. So I need, I need a motion from someone. Um, well, we just made a motion, but no one seconded it. So I guess the guy. 
Well, I didn't. I don't think I announced it because you could. You all consider to uh, you continue to converse. Okay, we have a motion. Uh, I'll have, make the motion to table this until January's meeting. Okay, we have a motion from Debbie to table with item number fourteen involving the airport hangers until January's meeting. Do I have a second? Second. We have a second by Flipper. All in favor, please raise your right hand. Any opposed? Okay, everyone is in favor. Josh is opposed. Uh, that ends agenda item number 14, agenda item number 15. Consider an act upon request made by Alderwoman Randall on changes to the council meeting procedures. I want to, uh, I have some notes also. Does everybody have the, the items that she's requested to change? Dora, do you have my email that I had sent? My, um, this just died. Okay. Like, literally died. I have one I need. Actually, I do need to get that other one, although I know what I'm saying. Thank you, Bill. Oh, no, I Yes, I'm, oh, okay. I'm gonna get that. What was this? That's from the mayor. Oh. Alright, uh, everybody got their, uh, you should have, you should have two pages. What number was it in our things? Uh, on the on new agenda, it is. On the original, it was 12, now 15. 15, yes. Yeah. So just to be added to the post office. 
So we need to take out the banks. Yes. Yeah. Security. Bank. And then do do we do it at the library? We, uh, we send it to them for them. They post it here. <coughs> okay, because the way it reads right now is that we post at the city hall bulletin board, which I know we do. Mm -hmm. uh, you, the post office, which we still do, security state bank, security bank, and the Driscoll Public Library. Well, we need to put security state bank and security bank out of there right. and put city website. That's all I'm just saying, because we don't do it at the bank anymore, but it has to be on the city website by law. Great. So we need to... I second that motion. Thank you. <laughs> a second or a motion? A second. Okay. I made the mo he's a, uh, I'll make Whatever you just said. I'll, to, to get rid of the two banks and put okay. the city website. Okay, we have a motion from Debbie to update the, uh, the council procedures. Uh, removing security state bank, security bank, and, and to add the city website as far as uh, agenda posting. Is there anything else that needs to be in there? Okay, we have a motion and a second. Motion by uh, Debbie, second by Josh. If all in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion passes unanimously. Okay, moving on. Also, add to second paragraph. This is going to be the, the paragraph after the state security bank. It's still in B1. It'll be the second paragraph of B1 that starts gotcha. with the council member's submission of requested. Okay. Okay. I, I would like. Oh, hang on. I'll read it. Okay. So, also add a second paragraph at the end of the paragraph. Each council member shall be allowed up to three agenda item requests for a regular meeting that cannot be denied, postponed, or labeled an informational item. Also, third paragraph, renewed wording says, however, they may council may receive items as informational. And I wish to address this initially. Okay. First of all, with regards to the council procedures, and especially this one, um, The, the administrator and the mayor are ones responsible to to provide the agenda, right, and to prepare the agenda. Okay, they need to take everything into consideration when they do this, including importance, including timeliness, and, and so forth. Okay, that's number one. Okay, also remember uh, that the uh, the mayor was elected by the entire city and not just one council district. Okay, so that, that is why the mayor and city administrator work together on the agenda, okay? So there's a lot of things to be involved when you prepare an agenda, okay? The other thing, number one, to stand out to me first is, is that there's no reason to have a limit to begin with. If a city council person has five legitimate agenda items that should be discussed, therefore they should. Whether it's five, whether it's three, whether it's one, whether it's two, okay? That's my take on that. Okay, agenda request must also follow certain criteria. Okay, so customarily you shouldn't accept agenda request that uh, I want to do this, I want to discuss, I want to, and so forth. So the mayor and the administrator have to take into consideration the action that can be taken and if it met the criteria. So I don't think, once again, I'm the mayor, you're the council people, right? Okay, I don't think you should give a council person a blank check to do whatever they want and submit for the agenda, okay? Uh, now, that doesn't mean that they're not gonna be accepted on all their agenda items, okay? Now, I'm gonna go further on, okay? Meetings have a time limit of four hours, all right? So tonight, we had executive session for 45, 50 minutes, okay? Uh, I'll have you know that the original agenda that was proposed, uh, I actually took off two items I requested that I didn't consider it to be timely in place of the executive session that we had to go into. So I believe that the mayor and the administrator need to have this flexibility in order to run an efficient meeting, one that's also effective. Okay, uh, that being said. Now, the other thing, there's two other things about this. First of all, I as mayor, I'm not going to ever deny an agenda request just for the heck of it. I promise you that. 
Yes, I have denied a couple. Okay, Debbie, I'm, now I'm going to comment on that. Okay, I have denied two agenda requests from you. Four. Uh, the two that I know. Those two months. Okay. Well, if I did, I had good reason, and I gave you an explanation and explained why I did so. And we put them on the next agenda or the next time it came up. No. Two of them required zero action. Okay, that's that. Okay. You brought that up just now. Now, the other thing, too, please remember, there's five city council people, okay? Everybody has their own role. I have my own initiatives, and on you know, down the line, this will come into play also later, okay? The mayor and the administrator have the, the wishes of all five people to, to, to be considered, okay, along with the community, okay? So they are the only two that can decide the, the, the relevance or, or if it needs to be there at that time and down the line. Okay, and remember, it is a conjunction with, it's the mayor and the city administrator, okay? Now, the other thing, too, is uh, if you mandate this, okay, all I'm saying is a council person can ask for agenda item anytime about anything that they wish, but if you mandate that whatever they request they're going to get, you're going to create a whole other uh, bag of worms, so to speak, okay? And, and I'll tell you why. Uh, that will give no way at all to prevent frivolous requests from getting on your council agenda. Okay, now I'm not saying anybody here is gonna do it. I'm not saying anybody's gonna do it tomorrow or a year from now. All I know is, is that we might have three new people here uh, in May, okay? Some might have their own initiatives, their own items, and all they wanna do is, is go after that. Well, the mayor and the administrator have to balance all of these things and try to make things work in order for us to have effective meetings. Okay, and then uh, the biggest thing is now uh, the mayor can't even play political games if he wants to. If the mayor just wanted to say no, I don't want it on there, there is already a process in place that prevents the mayor from doing this. Okay, and if two other council people notify the mayor or the administrator that they want an item on that agenda, then the mayor is overridden. That's only for a special meeting. No, ma'am. It's not in the procedures for a regular meeting. It's uh, in the procedures for a special meeting. That's not how I read it. That's not uh, how I know it. Um, okay. I guess so all I'm saying is... I don't care anymore. Well, then... We can just forget this. I'll make a motion to table my item <coughs> about the um, being allowed at the free agenda items. Because obviously, I don't know what I'm talking about. Oh. In that, in that motion, are we going to continue on to the rest of this? I'm just that one little section, and so I just... Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to need to that section. Just that, yes. Okay, I'll second. Okay, the motion was to... Table this, uh... Table or reporting the three the agenda second items. second paragraph okay. about okay. it. Okay, we have a motion from Debbie to... To table a request. Let me announce the motions, please. Okay, we have a second by Josh. All right, discussion. Michael, please. All right, we got confused because, so right now there's only three items we can ask for, right? No, no, no. no. You, can ask, no. Right now, you can ask for anything you want. Okay. This just kind of addresses whenever I send a whole list of great ideas. Oh, I don't get and then he calls it, hey, um, you should, we should take these to the for me. Well, well, it's not that you, you want to limit anything. We don't want to limit anything. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We want to work together as council. Okay. Deals on the items is what you, it's, right? Well, you have to, look, okay. Each one of us was elected. Yes, sir. Okay, you were elected by your district, et cetera, et cetera, okay? I was elected by the entire community, okay? Even then, I still don't have an iron hand on this. I have to work with our city administrator okay. to prepare the agenda. We both have to agree to. Yeah. Okay? So there's all kinds of things in here. There's all kinds of collaboration. Right? But if we go mandating that uh, each person can have three, well, now if everyone, if you have a really aggressive council, now you have 15 agenda items right off the bat every single month. And it does happen, and by the way. Up to three, it said you could have up to three. Because I was told once yes, that I could only have the one item. So that's why I'm saying I want to yeah, make sure I, that I have more than one item. Of course you can. People seem to get that. I, I think you are, you have two or three on this one alone. <laughs> 
So I realize that today yeah. it wasn't like that before. Yeah. Is what I'm saying. That's yeah. why this is. I've had this since, like, when we first brought this to to council. What in June? Yes, ma'am. You said you would bring it back. No, no. I had this in June. We all discussed this in June, and then the whole thing got tabled. Then you brought it back last meeting, and you only wanted that one thing. So I said, okay, I'll bring the okay. rest of it. And, and it's here. So, and it's here. It's here. And that's yeah. fine. Yes, yeah. so it was there the last time. Let's go on to the next thing. Well, I tell you what. Hold on. Uh, I run the meeting, not you, but we can go on to the next thing. Okay. Now, um, to answer your question, there's no. I got lost. Okay. 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 <laughs> well, well, there's a, there's way too much back and forth. Yeah, it's exactly. It's like, nice. Okay. And then just move on. I, right. We're wasting too much time. And I'm just. I, Understood. Just as it is, that's the way I would think. Understood. Okay, but I just want to point out, okay, that it's a collaboration of all of us to make things work. Okay, and the way it's designed is, is that the mayor and the city administrator create the agenda. Okay, and and it, and that's pretty much it. I think I'm very fair. I don't think I ever pick on anyone. Okay, uh, if you think I am picking on you, whatever, there's even something to do that you can do about that. Okay. You get three people that say they want that agenda item on there, it goes on there. Okay? I'm a second. So, all right, now we'll move on. Okay. Okay. Uh, on C4. You have to take a vote to show that item. My bad, okay. All right, okay, we have a motion and a second to table that item. All in favor, right hand, please. One, two, three. Okay, uh, all opposed? Abstain? Okay, uh, Debbie, Josh, and, and, and Stacy voted uh, yay, and uh, Michael and Flipper voted no. So the motion passes, we table the item. All right, uh, moving on on her request, uh, C4, in the last sentence, it says remove the wording, any group of five or more <coughs> shall appoint one person to address the council. This is referring to uh, agenda items when people want to speak. Uh, and, and, and our our procedures do say that uh, uh, any group of five or more shall appoint, and that that does need to be changed. Uh, and then uh, moving on on the same bullet point, uh, the last sentence uh, that he requests to remove the wording: if five or more citizens wish to address the council on any single agenda item. Those citizens are advised to select a spoke spokesperson to present their case. Um, Debbie feels that all attendees should be able to voice their own words, not as a group. Okay, I want to clarify a few things uh, just real quickly. Uh, number one, the reason why these are in the procedures. Okay, now remember this is only referring to agenda items. Okay, people need to sign up to speak on agenda items. All right now the reason that this is another thing uh, it's in the procedures so we can have more efficient and more effective meetings okay the mayor is in charge of running the meetings okay customarily the mayor can make choices on how to proceed during meetings and i do agree that this should not be the mayor that any group of five or more shall appoint one person to address the council okay because that that's a mandate Right. To me, the, the intent of that and what it should be would be that the mayor, uh, the mayor may appoint. All right, and, and where this comes into play, for example, let's say you have a, a really hot agenda item. Uh, you got ten people who want to speak up on their street. Okay, the mayor may decide that it's not necessary to have all people, all ten people, say the exact same thing. So he may request that each group of five get together and ask one person to speak for them, okay? So in other words, it's put in there to kind of prevent your meetings from becoming a circus, uh, from dragging on, going on and on and on on the same thing. And uh, the, the intent, that is the intent of this clause, but I don't think it should be mandated. I think if it's me, and I'm giving you my opinion, if it's me, and I'm here at a meeting, and we got a very good uh, agenda item going on, 
okay? And a lot is being said that's constructive. There's no reason to inhibit that, all right? But if it's just over and over, same thing, same thing, same thing, I think the mayor should have the authority to, to move on and try to expedite things. Yes, sir? I'm amenable to this if we can uh, give the mayor the opportunity to adjust times, uh, amount of time to speak down to one minute uh, and allow council to extend some, somewhere where everyone's given the same opportunity because they, uh, at previous meetings, maybe certain JP candidates were given 10 minutes to speak while other folks who were really concerned about policies affecting the top property taxes were limited to two minutes. Okay, that, that's, 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 that's public hearing. Okay, so uh, that's a great comment. Okay, okay I'll, tell you, I'll give you my, my take on that. Okay. Um, once again, the mayor, okay. Let's say you got, I'm not big on time limits. Okay, I'm not. However, there probably is a time and a place where they need to be used on your regular agenda items. Now, don't confuse this with public hearings, okay? Public hearings are where we ask people to come and speak to us. Therefore, every single person at that public hearing should be allowed to speak to us because that's what they are for, okay? They run the meetings and public hearings, okay? So nobody should be left out. If you post on your agenda, it basically says on public hearings, we invite you to come and give us your opinion. That's a public hearing. For example, this past spring when we were talking about the drainage initiative, the drainage pond and all that. Okay, there were 10 or 11 people showed up, uh, 10 or 12 and what happened. Every person should have been able to speak. Okay, now time limits can be very necessary for the exact same reasons that I've been speaking about, okay? So if you got 25 people, 10, 15 people to speak on an agenda item, all right, the mayor may find it necessary to say, hey, you know, on well, the first go around, I need to limit this to three minutes. So, so the reason I'm bringing this up is I agree with her point there. However, to your point, to make sure everyone's not speaking for 20 minutes each, right, so everyone gets an opportunity to speak, right. but if I see there's 50 people, one minute each guy has to get through it, uh, versus if you have one person, they go off. Right, that's, that's why it needs to be varied. That's why you can't mandate these things, because everything is so different, okay? So, uh, our, our, no, our, yeah, that's another thing that I don't like, to be honest with you. Okay, our procedures actually say, okay, that people speaking at the podium on an agenda item have five minutes. That should be changed. Okay, what, what should be there is, is that the mayor, the mayor may impose a time limit uh, by his discretion. I don't think that's right. What if we don't like the three of us going to roll? We've done that in the past. If it's in that's there correct. already, then we have to do it on every time. Well, so basically so then... I don't think we should change it from five minutes. Okay, so then now what you're telling me then is, okay, for example, the contentious items that we've had here in the six months that I've been the mayor, that I have to stop somebody from talking when they get to five minutes. Even if they're, huh? It's been done before. But why do it if you don't need to? Or you do that if you want them to well, continue. Well, not according to that. The procedures say they shall have five minutes to speak. Okay, but you want to tell them they can only have two minutes. I want to say that it needs to be variable. I want to say there should not be a mandate. I think our citizens deserve to know how much time they're going to have when they come to a meeting and not when you've decided or whoever's the mayor at the time can decide at a particular meeting, oh, today it's going to be two minutes, guys, and then the next meeting, oh, it's going to be three minutes, guys. I don't think that's right. Well, think what you're talking about, about, you're talking about two different things. No, I'm not. Okay, well, well. Okay, and you're talking I mean, about agenda I items. Understand what you're saying. You're talking about agenda items. Agenda items. Okay. We're right talking now, about we say five minutes. They have five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think that's right that at any given time it can be changed to two or three. Why not? Because they have a right to know when they walk in the door how much time they so have. Then, so then all they have is five minutes. Because that's what the rules say. Okay. You're going to give them 10? 
I think every single person that gets up gets dead. Okay, well, exactly. So what I'm saying is, that makes no sense. Yes, ma'am, it makes every bit of sense. Okay. Okay, and I'm going to tell you why. I'll, I'll agree to disagree with you on it. Well, uh, and I'm going to tell you why. Okay, because you, you can't keep throwing out these bars without getting something coming back. I'm and so I'm coming bar. back. I'm giving you my opinion. Okay, yes, ma'am. All right, so I'm going to tell you why. Okay, which I was trying to do initially. Okay. If we mandate, if we have an agenda item, okay, it's very important, and you mandate, oh, by the way, you got five minutes, okay? Who's going to time? Start your timer. That's absurd, okay? I don't like it, okay? And I will never do it unless absolutely positively have to, okay? But there's going to come times where you need to have that, 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 uh, authority to do that. You need to have that available to you. So you can't mandate all these things. You can't mandate this kind of stuff. Okay? Well, you can, but then you're going to, uh, your functionality is going to be a lot less. You're just not going to be able to function. Okay? I attended a public hearing where people were supposed to come and speak to us. There was maybe 12 people there. They were given a three-minute time limit in a public hearing. Now that is ridiculous. Now if there were a hundred, well, you might want to think about it. Otherwise, you'll never get out of the room. And then have another, there's two public hearings, they may need to come back to the second one, okay? But if we're sitting here and we've got a, a great discussion going on, we have great things being put forth, we should not limit that. But if you got, let's say, okay, I remember years ago, uh, our city administrator tried to, to, to have a pets licensed, believe it or not. Not vaccinated, she wanted everybody to have a license. I was on city council then. And we were over there, and it was SRO, and it went around the block, all the people who wanted to talk. Well, it was quite quite plain after the first 10 people spoke what was going to happen, okay? So that might be kind of, a, that is a true story. Uh, I didn't make that one up. But I'm just saying, okay, once again, you know, and this isn't because I'm the mayor. This is because uh, if Debbie's in my place, this is because uh, it, the, another mayor comes after me, of course, okay? And of course, you can keep going and changing rules on and on and on, but we need to understand the reason why they're there, okay? And if you take away all these things from, from the mayor or from the city administrator or whomever else, you're hurting the effectiveness of your city government. Okay? Now, once again, like I said, if I see 30 people out there, you know, and then we have 20 agenda items, well, yeah, I might ask for a time limit. That's all I'm saying. It's still mandated. Debbie, I, I want to support your uh, amendment there, but I also want to put some, some the ability to put some bounds on. If we can say I at the beginning. Well, no, it was on that item, though. It's a, it's a bound that item. I, I, I agree with allowing everyone to speak, uh, so long as we bound if I allow the mayor to appoint at the it's beginning. Not at, at all. Okay, but C4 is. C4. I'm only going towards the. This, I said the last sentence needs to be removed to appoint one person. I also, in G2, to remove that. I said nothing about time. My request had nothing to do about time. Well, that's true. I did. I know. I that's just, true. I mean, it's it's I did. in the same paragraph. Right. I'm trying to find a way to support your amendment. If I want to support your amendment. I didn't want to talk about time. I didn't want to talk about time. Okay. My, my whole deal was we should let every person speak and not group them. I think every citizen has the right to just come up and if you're gonna only give them one minute, at least they get one minute to say, I don't like this, blah, blah, blah. They should be able to do that. I don't think they should have to have a group. I don't foresee ever trying to do it, uh, personally. And that's fine, and I don't I'm like glad. That. I don't like the idea. There, and it's been used in the past. Yeah, I don't like the idea either. <laughs> but it's there for a reason, that's all I'm saying. I make a motion to accept the amendment uh, with the constraint that the mayor be, have the ability to a, a allocate an amount of time per speaker at the beginning of the meeting. 
uh, just said that. Please I'm repeat that. Please repeat that. I make a motion that we accept the amendment with the, uh, and give, in addition to giving the mayor authorization to set a time limit per speaker at the beginning of the meeting. Okay, we have a motion uh, uh, from Josh to, to, to make an amendment to the procedures uh, disallowing uh, a group of, of one person to speak for a group of five, providing the mayor has the authority to uh, impose a time limit if necessary. Can I make a comment on this? Sure. Okay, the, the objective here is if someone does want to put an arbitrary limit, if you like to speak three minutes, three of us can say we're up rolling that because it's annotated at the beginning of the meeting and not arbitrarily applied throughout the meeting, which is the thing I dislike the most. Yeah. Because I don't want nobody sitting up, standing up there and reading me a book like Ted Cruz did in the Senate time. Yes. You know? Yep. So. Okay, if I'm not mistaken, that, that goes with everything. Okay, I think that's that's already there as far as our procedures. Well, we'd remove that five minutes and it, would, it also requires you set a time at the beginning of the meeting so you're not arbitrarily Ten minutes for you, three minutes for you. Oh no, no, you can't do that. Well, it's been done. It would be, it would be codified in the regulation. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I'll agree. I'll agree to that too. I don't, I don't think that's something you got to put in there as far as as far as your procedures. That's something you would just overrule the mayor if he tries to do it. You've got five minutes in there now. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying, change off that five minutes with mayor. Dictates an amount of time to begin the meeting. Okay, right now we're actually talking about the, the group of five or more. And we, we're sorry to bore you with all this, folks, but it is very important, by the way. Okay, um, right now, paragraph right now the proposal is, is a group of five or more. And paragraph C4. And so paragraph C4. Paragraph C4. Oh, it's part of paragraph C4. It's in fact part of paragraph C4. The last paragraph. A C4. C4. Yeah. It's the last That's sentence. all I don't want to agree with. I want to second the last sentence. A C4. Okay. okay. Second the Hold on. Let's backtrack. Okay, we have a motion to amend our procedures to disallow appointing one person to speak for five during an agenda item. Um, that's pretty much it. Okay, now do you tie in the time? Oh, providing the mayor can can impose a time limit if he deems necessary. At the beginning of a meeting. Oh, it would be by each agenda item. No. At the beginning of the meeting. Okay, all right, so the motion is at the beginning of the meeting. Okay. You added something at the end something about overruling or something? Well, no, no, okay, okay. It's, it's, it's just changing, uh, removing the wording that says any group of five or more shall appoint one person to address the council. Okay, um, so we're, we're disallowing that, we're getting rid of it. Okay, uh, but allowing the mayor to impose a time limit, um, provided he does so at the beginning of the meeting. Correct, Josh? Okay, so it's, it's, it's two pronged. You're removing a clause and then you're adding that time limits must be imposed at the beginning of the meetings. I think we need to put a time limit in this conversation. It's well, we're trying to, however, that, that there's no choice. Okay, yeah. We're going to get through it and we're going to sometimes... I think it all depends on how many people you have sitting out there. Right now, there's there's less than, less than 10. Okay, do we have a second? 20 minutes each. Do we have a second yet? I'll second it. Okay, Stacy seconds it. Okay, discussion please, Mike. We're good. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have one question, okay, about this. Okay, now when you're talking about every single agenda item, okay, um, as far as the time limit goes, now remember, you might have one agenda item that has 15 people to speak, and another agenda item that has one person or two people. Now, three council members could make a motion to extend someone's time. Uh, I think it needs to be straight across the board for every agenda item. At the beginning, I mean, if you're going to vote this in, it would have to be for every agenda item at the meeting. You can't switch them up at every single item. So you're saying, well, okay, fine. 
that's what's the situation. I'm not even going to switch to having you decide at the beginning of a meeting. I'm saying, though, if that's what council decides to do, then that's what we're going to do. Right. Well, I mean, it's going to be a discussion about the meeting. Well, I mean, the meeting is going to be a discussion about the meeting. Well, I mean, the meeting is going to be a discussion about the meeting. You get three minutes. Item four, you get one minute. For item three, you can't do that. Uh, okay. Okay, I think. I mean, I, I suppose you can if they agree to it. Once again, I, I, I think you should get back to the purpose of this, the intent of what we're trying to accomplish. Okay? The intent is to shorten the meeting. Okay? Contrary to what we're doing now. All right? And uh, remember, this is your proposal. Okay? I so, did not oppose. I, no, I did not bring time into this. I left that out. Okay, I'm telling you why I was. So, okay. So, um, so basically, remember, okay, the motion is, is to, to set the time in the beginning of the meeting. Okay? Regardless if there's four people to speak, one person to speak, ten people to speak. Okay, that's the motion in a second. All in favor of said motion, please raise your right hand. Okay, we have three opposed to the motion. One opposed, two opposed. Motion carries. Uh, Michael, Josh, and Stacy voted for the motion. And uh, Debbie and Flipper voted against it. Okay, so we no longer, can, you can no longer appoint one person to speak for five. So okay. it's two, first paragraph has to be changed also. Okay, thank you. That would come, that would be the same exact thing. Yes, it's yeah. kind of duplicate. Yeah. I, I, but Dora said she got it, so we're okay. <clears throat> okay, moving on to C6. Uh, council members should direct all requests for information to the city administrator with a copy being directed to the mayor. <coughs> okay. What we've been doing, right? Well, uh, I'll let you speak and then I'll go ahead. I just wonder what you. Go ahead, that's what, your floor. That's what it needed to be changed to, is what I'm saying. Because I think it's a. I don't even know what it says, because I don't. My computer died on me. So um, I'm suggesting that it should read C6, last sentence, should read. Council members should direct all requests for information to the city administrator with a copy being directed to the mayor. So when you send an email, I mean, that's how I've been doing it. I've sent it to David and I'm sending it to uh, the mayor. So both have a copy. I wish I could get an email to David, but I can't. Mine's broken. Uh, I, I, I don't, my concern here is the court wants everything to go to Dora. Uh, well, That's the city admin at the time. Right. Um, which, hold on, I'll give you a, um, okay, Debbie, you just, are you through right now? <coughs> yeah, that's all I want to change okay. to read. Okay, she, all right. Okay, Josh? Oh, I, I, it seems like you just want to be included on that, and you just don't want to overwhelm the yeah. city administrator. Okay, let me, um, I don't mean to bore you any further, but I, I find this to be another very important cause in our in our guidelines. Okay, and once again, we need to look at the intent of this. Okay, um, the intent of this, for example, is remember there there's 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 five city council people, right? And then there's the mayor. So there's six people that can be sending things to the city administrator. Okay. Over and over and over, if they wish, okay, by the, the, the suggested guidelines. Okay, the reason why this is in here is to essentially help the city administrator do his daily job. Okay, uh, he can't be spending his or her, all of his or her time answering for information requests from city council people. That's number one. Now granted, that might be a stretch, okay, but it does happen, I guarantee you. I know for a fact it happens in, in, in other cities, okay? And then the, um, the other thing is, is that, hang on, I don't want to get ahead of myself like the last time. Oh, I have handwritten notes, too. OK, 
Okay, so once again, um, we have to allow our city administrator to have time to do his daily work, to do his work. And if he has to ask for six different people all the time, that can be quite difficult. I'm not saying it is with us. I'm saying that you, it can be. Like I said before, there could be three new people here in May, okay? And they have agendas of their own, and they constantly badger the administrator, okay? There may be things uh, that the mayor already knows after discussion with the administrator that he can relay to council and save the, and save the administrator the effort, okay? I see this as the intent of this, okay? And, and uh, now I myself, okay, I have absolutely no problem, right? I don't need to be the middleman, okay? If, if our council right now wants to go directly to David, I have absolutely no problem with it, okay? And at the last meeting I asked that as long as I am aware of what is being asked, okay? I myself, this administration, I have absolutely no problem with it, okay? However, once again, I have five council people here right now. I might have three new people next time. They might be overly aggressive. They might be hard to get along with. And the list goes on. So I think the right needs to be reserved for to go back to this or, or to say that the flow of information runs through the mayor to the administrator. I'm not saying I'm going to do that. And I'm not. I trust every single one of you. Okay? But if it comes to a point where it does, and I know some of you, two of you that are sitting here know that that's happened, okay? Well, we have to have a way to prevent that, okay? So I don't think you should mandate. I have no problem with it. Let me be perfectly clear. It should not be a mandate. Also, uh, informational items, okay, the flow of information is, 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 has a lot more to do with just the, just the agenda, by the way, keep that in mind. Well, it reads now that it should go to the mayor. Sorry, I, I, I found the page. Um, so right now it mandates that we only go to the mayor. And since we already had this discussion, I want to say it was in June, could have been July, and you said it's okay to go to the city administrator as long as I know, and that's why we've yeah. been sitting in yeah. the city I think it was just, I think it was just I a month or two ago. I should put that in in words in the procedures because again if we have what happened before happen we can always go back and change it but that's just it why why change it it, it needs to remain Somebody the way it is the task if they they see, see this okay yeah. i know this because it could be the day you go hey how come you haven't been sending this to me i'm not saying you will i'm just saying you could because i'm not following procedure so well no you would okay if you if, Either way, if you don't send it to me, you're not following procedure. But Either I way. You know I Yes, ma'am, you sure do. And so is everyone else. I have no problem. Okay? I'm trying to think in the future. I'm trying. I have a different way of looking at these yeah. things. I've been in charge of rules and stuff. Today. I'm okay. sorry. So, uh, but up today, yeah. I think it should read how we do it today. Well, I've already, I've already told you how I like, like it to be done. Okay? So you don't need to put it into your, your laws to your procedures. Well, it's already there, though. That's what I'm saying. We need to change it to read how we do it today. Because it's already there. Say, only go to the mayor. You're, you're only in a can of worms if you want to get every single little thing that's different from one from one mayor well, to the next. Luckily, y'all, that, that was the last thing on what I had. <laughs> in the interest of time, I make a motion. We accept the C, G, 6. C, 6. C, 6. C six. I'll second it. Okay, so you make the motion to go ahead and change the wording in council procedures to as long as the mayor has, has an email copy. Yes. Okay, and Debbie, and all right, Debbie, <laughs> did you get that, guys? Yeah. Okay, all right. I said that I have to say any further discussion. Okay, all in favor, please raise your right hand. Okay, uh, all opposed? Oh, abstain? Just for grins, huh? I don't care. That's it. <laughs> okay. All right, the motion passes. You made the motion, Don. Josh made the motion. I, just, I, really want, I yeah. care that this is over. Well, well, he can abstain. He can vote against it. He can do whatever. He can okay. go against it. He 
That's what we learned in the class. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> okay, the motion passes to 4 0 1. Okay, I, I do want to remind folks that uh, um, if something gets out of line, you can't change it now. Okay? You just stop that from happening. This is what I was trying to say. All right, moving on. Okay. Uh, agenda item 16 has already been settled. Uh, no reason to, uh, to, to discuss it. Uh, that's what I was told uh, prior to the meeting. Oh. Go ahead, David, please. Oh. <clears throat> uh, the lawyer representing the class sent out an email this afternoon saying that uh, this is distribution cost recovery factor petition that had been settled. <coughs> awesome. So there's no longer any need for us to act. Yippee. Right. That's been well, years going on. Years that this has been going on. Well, they do it. Well, the interesting thing is now they can do this twice a year, then they do it every year. Yeah, every year. Well, give me, you don't have to do it. I'll entertain a motion to take no action. No, I, mean, I thought maybe you had to do something official to move on. No, no. All right, all right, agenda item number 16 is discontinued. Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like All right. Uh, agenda item number 17. Uh, consider and act upon the following items concerning uh, David Gregor. Um, item number A. Okay, we, I would like to do these A, B, and C. Okay, item number A. Uh, request made by David Gregor for exchange of land out of golf course property for a lane from County Road 768 to his property adjacent to the golf course in consideration of him removing his recently constructed fence. Uh, you guys have been providing materials. Seems to be enough that would uh, to go on if you wish. Okay. Uh, also, before we proceed, I'll, I will let you know that Mr. Brego has asked for uh, these items to be tabled to where he can be here. Uh, however, that also requires council action. Okay, you can table all three, you can table one, table two, whichever one you wish, if you desire to do so. That's why they are split up. Control why his or his attorney's presence would require us to table anything. Do we have to table anything? Does no. Uh, the, uh, if you wish to table, it would be a, just at your discretion to move to the January meeting to where uh, he can be here. For exchange of land of the golf course property for the name. So. I, I think we should, he should be able to be here for this. I mean, uh, honestly, it's, it, it's something he's brought, one of the things he's brought to the council to do. He probably should be here to discuss it. Nah. And then. Wow. This is, okay. But this is this is this is city land, right? The golf course. Let me give okay. Let me preface this just a tad on this particular one uh, on item A. Okay, Mr. Gregor's lawyer contacted our attorney to request a, a, a land exchange, and it's basically one for the other and nothing else involved. Okay, and the land he's referring to is the the part that he put a temporary fence at right now when we had the, uh, the water issue. So he wants other land to exchange, essentially to give that land to the city that he put a temporary fence around to, uh, I guess, to negotiate his, you know. Okay, so. Um, so he's holding that land for hostage to get. Yeah, I'm trying to That's the way I see it. That's the way I see it. Yes, we'll like he should be here to talk, to say what he meant and why he made plans. But yes, he just wants the land swap. No. And they're almost identical amounts. No, I think what happens is we exchange land and then he's going to want 
something more back there. I don't know, that's going to be more county. No, I'm out. He can have his net. It's like negotiating with the terrorists. You, you, you keep intimidating us and threatening us and shouting at us, and then, oh, by the way, give me something else. Absolutely not. Wow. I make a motion that he keeps his land and we keep our land. Okay, we have a motion uh, to deny a request to exchange land from Mr. David Grego. Um, we have a second. Second. Uh, we have a second by, okay, we have a motion by Michael, second by Josh. Any further discussion? Can we get some insight from the planning call? Uh, they did not sign up to speak. Um, Okay, we have a motion and a second on the floor. Basically, okay. I have a question for them. Okay, we have a request from, from Stacy uh, since two of the partners from the current group are here. Uh, Otter, would you please go? Whomever, please come to the podium. If this trade doesn't happen, um, would y'all, is there like some sort of plan in place to adjust the sidewalk or the, the, the path? Uh, we do have a plan in place. We're looking at uh, right now to shortening the hole, uh, making it more of a drivable parkour. Uh, like I said, the tee box that we've used the last five months, because that fence is up, it's been destroyed. You know, there's a lot of there's ruts, and now we're just going to take that out of play, put in another car path uh, down the right side that comes back into play with the existing car path that is on our property. So that, that bit of car path is on his property? Yeah, that's that, correct. That's what I'm told. Okay, and so, okay. And y'all y'all would just adjust it to where it would now be on the property? Correct. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. been about 25 years, Okay, real quick. <clears throat> you know, um, we have a motion in a second. I want to I say a couple of things. First of all, um, my intent on this, okay, is to really try and put every single thing behind us, okay? And that's why these are here. When his attorney contacted our attorney, I assumed that they wanted it on, you know, that they would, that he would be here, they wanted it looked at and what have you. This was our first council meeting. We put it on the agenda, okay? So, so that's why it's here. So, however, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Grego sent a letter to our city secretary asking that it be read at the, uh, the council meeting, okay? And to uh, be honest with you, I, I hadn't read the entire thing, uh, but I have concerns with some of this on this letter. Um, so right now we have a motion and a second on this. Um, I will read the, uh, his response to the first one, to item number A. Okay, everybody all right with that? Okay, Thomas Kate, my attorney and I have had conversations and we all would like to move forward with the property exchange. Tom, would you like to address that? In my conversation with uh, the, the lawyer for Mr. Grego, I, I told him that I had absolutely no authority to act on behalf of the city council. Everything had to go before city council, so that's that's not a correct statement that we all want to go ahead with the land exchange. Okay. I ask Ms. Rodriguez, our city secretary, to furnish you with Gary T. Allen Associates Incorporated, Incorporated, Incorporated survey showing the number five tee box on our property in the area behind the number five green that the city currently owns. I want to do an exchange as they are almost the same size, but the property with the car path at the number five tee box would have more value due to the fact it is in play for the number five uh, hole and the property that I would like to exchange has no area to play unless the green was overshot by some 50 to 60 yards. I have provided a survey and will also pay to have the transaction recorded if approved. Okay, I wanted to read that before anyone voted. We also allowed discussion uh, after a second if there is any. Mike. 
point uh, that if they want to be good neighbors, they would have uh, come talk to us before causing the destruction of the T box, putting up a fence that had uh, that impeded the uh, car path that had been there for 20 plus years. Uh, we could have happily made an agreement there if they had acted in good faith and good character. Okay, anybody else? Okay. All in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. All opposed? All right. Motion carries. Vote of four to one. Flipper, Michael, Stacy, and Josh voted for the motion. Uh, Debbie voted against it. Now, I got to read this this request from, from Mr. Grego uh, late this afternoon. I'm sorry. We also have a request from Mr. Grego uh, on the next two items. Uh, I do want to say I didn't get back to Divine until about 5 o'clock today. Uh, I didn't see it until around then. It refers to these other two items. Um, you know, and now that I've read this, I'm just going to give you, um, I feel like there was enough on the, the first item that you just voted on. Now that I've read this and some other things that are involved in here, there, there's so much, um, you know, here, I personally have no problem tabling items B and C if Mr. Grego wishes to address the council on these items. Um, that's my personal opinion. Uh, these were put on the agenda, you know, last Wednesday. Um, so he says, uh, you know, he, he didn't receive formal notice that he was on the agenda. Um, I'll also tell you why I put these two items on the agenda. Um, ordinarily, these two items, for example, item B, Bill Mr. Gregor for a water that he used while connected to the golf course well. Okay. Ordinarily, this would be handled by our city staff inside the office or whatever, okay, to where, hey, you city water, you know, you can ask them to send them a bill and all that, okay. Uh, item C, construction of form on Planet City Street, an unpermitted driveway, okay. That also would ordinarily be handled by regular staff in the office and then him, uh, hey, you didn't get a permit, you didn't do this, you didn't do that. But with all things considered, with everything on this, revolving around this issue, the water, the golf course, and everything, I wanted to remove it from anyone at the city staff, the city office, and bring it right straight to council. So council can give the guidance and the direction today that it wishes for the staff to go. Right? So, uh, and other than that, we have a, a new city administrator who wasn't here when all this was going on. He's not privy to everything that happened uh, and, and so forth, okay? So, remember, I did not have these comments when the agenda was approved. It is up to council. Um, to me, they're fairly cut and dried. Um, I think you've been given documentation. Um, about these, and it's up to you if you wish to proceed. Um, and if you wish, I suppose you can also read this. I would like to table B and C until Mr. Grego could be here for the meeting. He said the January meeting. Which would be the January meeting, probably, yes. I mean, he doesn't say he can be here, but I'm pretty sure January. No, his, his lawyer requested a January meeting. Okay. Great. Yes, ma'am. So I'd like to table B and C Michelle, I'm ready. until Mr. Grego can be here. <coughs> okay, that motion. Good morning meeting. Sorry, I, I got distracted. Is that a motion or just a discussion? That is a motion. Okay, we have a motion to table items B and C until the January meeting. Why do we need a table B? I mean, do we have to take any action on B? Is, well, it's you kind can, of my question. You can take action or table it. We, um, we have the option to 
not charge him, or we can take an action and charge him for the water he was used. The question that would come up is the discrepancy between when he claims he started using the water and when the Sheriff's Department investigation uncovered that he started using the water. Those are two different dates. Okay. I think that's about a year apart. It was March of 21, uh, what the Sheriff said. Uh, the Sheriff just went back to the contract, the SC Golf Management. Yeah. He, didn't, he didn't name the date. Uh, he was yet to provide a written report of that. Uh, but, um, however, it was, uh, it was offered to pay for the water, which is why it's on there. That's why I would like to, to table it for him to be here to discuss this instead of just a written note to us. So the, does this have a meter or something? How do we know how There is no meter. Uh, okay, real quick, we have a motion. Uh, okay, by the way, well, the thing is, is that in this correspondence, which you, which every one of you has, okay, uh, he, he has offered, he offered to pay the Divine Golf Group $200 a month for use of the water. So therefore, and he, he stated that he started using the water in April of 22. The water was disconnected at the end of July in 23. So... That's why I put it on it for council rather than a city city hall, you know, so forth. Granted, it's not utility water, but it's still city water. The DG said, no, we don't want you to pay. I mean, well, once again, uh, yeah, yeah, the DG said that. Yes, they did, apparently. Yeah, but he says otherwise now in this letter today, so he's going back and forth. Yeah. And so, a yes, right, in a way, no. Yeah. But I'd like to table it and let him be here for any questions we might have for them. Um, I got a question. We got uh, Mr. Brian Navarro here. Uh, Brian, can you step up to the podium? Well, before you before you introduce this, okay, I, that's one of the reasons why I'm suggesting, that's why I feel like because of everything that's in this, okay, there's inconsistency, there's things to be debated. Uh, there's, there's, there's accusatory. Um, Slander. So well, could be. So I don't think this is why, once again, remember, I got this to this afternoon, okay? This agenda was finished on Friday, okay? Um, I didn't see anything wrong with, with, with item A. It's pretty cut and dry. Hey, this land for that land. Okay, uh, decision made, that was easy to make. The other ones, uh, I don't necessarily even want to introduce this. So you don't want to mention it? No, sir, I don't. Which one? Uh, his comments that he wishes to be said. Oh. If he wants to be, um, I don't want to introduce it. Uh, and and I, I personally, I, I go lie to you, I, I would be in favor of, of tabling uh, items B and C. But uh, council makes that decision. Uh, I like and we do have a motion. B, so the, the, the money will be going to the golf court, right? Um, no. No, he's saying he paid Mr. Navarro $200. He was no, he, to he offered it. He offered it. Once again, um, you know, I based this on he offered two hundred dollars a month to pay for water. Therefore, he gave it a value. Okay, no, it wasn't metered. Okay, impossible to meter. Okay, the sheriff said that he determines that he might have had permission just to use the water. Okay, from the previous contract. That remains to be said, and the sheriff even said that. Okay, he can't determine one way, one way or another. But, uh, okay, he said he did not steal the water, okay, because there were pipes already there. He probably had permission. In other words, the contract, okay? That's not the point here. The point is, to me, he offered to pay $200 for the water. Common knowledge. It was sent out to every one of you already back in uh, September, okay? It's in an email, and I, I had copies made of that email. So that's why I put it on here, because it's common knowledge for everyone. Okay? He offered to pay $200 for the water. The sheriff has decided that it wouldn't be wise to proceed 
criminally, which I wouldn't want to do anyway. Remember, he was not accused of anything by this city or by my golf group in public, okay? It was turned over to the sheriff, plain and simple. There was absolutely no accusations, okay? But he did offer to pay for it. Well, thank you. And, and, he, and, and for me, if our citizens, you, all of us, we have water leaks in our backyards and we don't know about it, and they go on and on and on and on, and you might get a bill for another hundred bucks, you gotta pay it. Right? If it's on your side, you gotta pay it. He offered to pay it. I just want to put everything to rest, so I put it on the agenda. And they denied. Once again, he, he offered to the wrong people. The city owns the property, the city owns the wells, the city. Okay? So, anyway, you said you wanted to table it. I want to table B and C. Okay. All right. I'll second it. Okay, we have a second to table B and C. Uh, any more further discussion? All right. All in favor, please raise your right hand. The press, that's a yay. All right. All opposed? Okay, all right. Motion passes. Flipper, Stacy, and Debbie voted yay. Michael and Josh voted no. This will be moved to the January agenda. That before then, each of you will be able to produce what he's provided. Uh, and then he can come in person to answer your concerns. Uh, informational items. I have I have one. Uh, Commissioner Lawler is on vacation. He's due back very soon. He told me that as soon as he gets back, we will proceed with uh, the Bur the Burbu drainage project. Okay, so that's a good thing. All right. Uh, anything else? Anyone? Anybody else? Saturday the sixteenth. Oh, yes, ma'am. Did I steal that one from you? No, you did not. Oh, I was, I was joking. Saturday yeah. 16th is Breeze Across America. Okay, and at 11 o'clock. Yeah. Okay. That's a, that's a really worthwhile thing, guys. So if you can get out there and support it, it'd be great. Okay. Agenda item 19 adjourned. Do I have a motion? Uh, we have a motion from Clifford to adjourn. Second. Second. All right, Michael. Second by Mike. All in favor of adjourning, please. <laughs> Motion passes unanimously. Debbie, you're a hard lady to agree with. No, I'm not. You just keep changing the words.